Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at the First United Church of East Syracuse. It's good to see everyone here this morning, old friends, new friends. Whether you are here in person or are joining us on our social media, we're glad to have you with us. I have a few announcements this morning. First, we are glad to have Reverend Beth Quick with us again today, leading our worship service. Um, there is no coffee hour this morning, but that will resume next week. Parish Council will meet in the lounge on Tuesday evening at 6.30. And you see the lovely flowers. If you ordered flowers, you can take them with you after the service today. Also, we would like to extend our sympathies and our love to the family of Linda Horton, who passed away earlier this week. She's a longtime member and was secretary at our church. Also, our sympathies to Beth for the loss of her cousin earlier this week, to Beth and her family. Does anyone else have announcements today? And Carl is here. <laughs> That's an announcement, yes. <clears throat> nope. Yes, and Joan is here, yes. We're glad to see you here, Joan, as well. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. At this time, I'm going to light the two candles that we've been lighting for a long time. The candle of remembrance is lit for those in the military, for their families, our veterans, first responders, and all those in harm's way. We light the candle of peace. That reminds us to pray for God's peace in our homes, our community, our nation, and in the world. Now, if you would please rise, if you are able, and join me in our call to worship. <clears throat> Yesterday, we had lost so much. We lost the light. We lost, we lost the argument. argument. We lost love. We lost, we lost life. We lost God. We lost Jesus. But this morning, we found the tomb empty. The morning, the morning Christ. The gardener walking. The disciples running, the women proclaiming, the resurrection waiting, and Jesus risen. It is good we have found our way here this Easter day. Love is back. Jesus, Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Our first hymn this morning is number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today, verses 1 through 3 and 5.
be seated. And join me now in our Easter affirmation of faith. I believe, I awaken to Jesus Christ, the one who walked our earth and whose God light shone through, the one whose life came from the very life of God, our guide, our teacher, our friend, whose life was an intent of God's creative imagination, who sang love's song at his beginning and was blessed, rejected by the powers of the world, executed by those same powers, sharing the same death of us all. Love had been killed, and they thought this the end, but nothing could contain, bind, or hold the life Jesus began. And the story continues to be believed, the story of renewal, transformation, and life again. I believe in, I awaken to Jesus. Our first gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, Verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of God for the people of God. God. Our next hymn is number 2115, Christ Has Risen.
may be seated. Our second gospel lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day of resurrection, on this day of new life, we ask that you fill this worship space, that you fill our hearts and lives with your Holy Spirit with your spirit of life and transformation. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh God, you who are our joy, our life, our resurrection, our rock and redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been telling you on, on Palm Sunday and again on Monday, Thursday, that our best strategy as disciples of Jesus, our best strategy is to stay, is to stay close to Jesus. Stay with me, Jesus has been asking us. 
And then today, this morning, this Easter morning, Jesus' message is strikingly different. His message is, don't hold on to me. Don't hold on to me. Go. So how do we get from one to the other? Why does Jesus tell Mary not to hold on to him, not to stay with him? And what do his words mean for our discipleship? Today we've heard the Easter story from two Gospels. John's Gospel, the one that I just read, is probably the most well-known version. And then we heard from Joan Matthew's account. And this phrase, don't hold on to me, that occurs only in John's version, although I think maybe we'll see that the the meaning of the phrase is a little bit in Matthew's account, too. And at first brush, Jesus' words, they sound kind of dismissive to me, as if Mary Magdalene is somehow being too clingy. And I don't know about you, but if I thought that my dearest loved one, my teacher, who I'd devoted my life to, had died, had been violently put to death, and then suddenly, somehow, seemed to be alive after all, resurrected, I'd be clingy. I I wouldn't want to let them out of my sight for a second. Not a second. And instead, the, the first thing, that nearly the only thing that Jesus really says to Mary, aside from getting her to recognize who he is, the first thing he says is, don't hold on to me. Jesus says he's ascending to God, as if that explains everything. And while he tells Mary what not to do, don't hold on, He does also tell her what she should do, and that is go. Go and tell. Go and tell the disciples what she's seen. And she does. I have seen the Lord. Mary is the first preacher of the resurrection news. But still, why the don't hold on to me? I've been trying to think about where I hear that phrase, don't hold on to me, where I have heard that phrase in my life. It it was sort of striking on, like, I, I know I have heard someone say that to me before, don't hold on to me. When do we say that? And it struck me that my eight year old niece, Siggy, says this to me all the time. <laughs> Whenever she is trying to do something daring, whenever she's trying to do some trick that she's working out, some gymnastic maneuver that involves, you know, leaping off the couch and doing some sort of somersault or some tumbling feet, some wild antic that she has this vision of in her head, and I, Aunt Beth, have visions of broken bones and the potential for head injuries and I just want her to be safe and so I want to hold on to her. I want to steady her. I want to make her more secure, make her take a little bit less of a risk. Aunt Beth, don't hold on to me, said with a little exasperation and a little thrill at whatever feat she is about to try. And so I try. I try to let go enough for her to be the brave and bold person she wants to be. I can only imagine that that Mary and the others Seeing Jesus, who they thought they had lost, would want to keep him because they had failed to protect him before. But now they have a second chance. 
and they will protect him from harm. They won't let him out of their sight. This time, this time they will stand up to his enemies. They won't fall away. They will get it right. They will stick to Jesus like glue. But everything has changed. And now, if they want to stay with Jesus, they have to let go. Because Jesus is on the move. Jesus has things to do. Jesus is going to God. And the best way to be with Jesus now will be to let him go so that they can get to work sharing the good news of resurrection and life. And it's a big shift to make. I can only imagine how Mary must have felt walking away, leaving Jesus at the tomb. But whatever hesitation she might have been feeling, and however much she worried, however much her impulse was to resist that don't hold on to me, she does what Jesus asks. Matthew's Easter story is a little bit different, but I think it actually mirrors John's gospel well. In Matthew, Mary Magdalene is accompanied by another Mary, Jesus' mother, perhaps, or one of the other women who had this common name. And they first find an angel, a, a messenger of God at the empty tomb. And Matthew's gospel also focuses on a, a don't. In his case, it's don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, the messenger says. You are looking for Jesus, but, but he has been raised. And as in John's gospel, the messenger doesn't want the women to linger. They get to come and see, but then they have the same task. Go, go quickly, in fact. Go quickly and tell. And again, the women heed the message, both full of joy, but still full of fear, we read, despite the instructions. Yet before they can get to the disciples, they see Jesus himself, and perhaps sensing that they haven't yet fully listened to the messengers don't, Jesus repeats it and repeats their task. Don't be afraid. Go and tell. Now, we don't know if the women remained afraid or not, but we, we at least we don't hear about it again. So perhaps from Jesus' own mouth, they could let those words sink in. Don't be afraid. It isn't that Jesus doesn't want us to stay close to him anymore once Easter hits, once the resurrection happens. It's that we, we have to make sure that we are staying close to Jesus for the best reasons. Are we holding on to Jesus because his risk-taking makes us uncomfortable? Is it that we want Jesus to be safe so that we can feel safe? Does Jesus and his, his way of confronting and, and breaking boundaries and making a stir scare us? I'd say yes, <laughs> sometimes. Do we want to hold on to stay close, to keep an eye on Jesus? I think there's a deep connection between don't hold on to me and don't be afraid. Jesus knows that our, our default mode is to be afraid. As much as we might long for new life, new life is actually pretty scary, too. It's so unknown. New life changes everything. And as much as we might be ready for change, 
The lives that we know are comfortable. They maybe feel safe. Don't be afraid. Again and again in the scriptures and again on Easter morning, don't be afraid. One of my favorite theologians, Walter Brueggemann, writes, being unafraid is an odd vocation, an odd calling, but it's the calling of all those who have been baptized. We are different. The Acts account of the early church says that the Spirit of God came upon Jesus in baptism. What the Spirit does is visit our lives with the freedom of God so that we are unafraid in the world, able to live differently, not needing to control, not needing to dominate, not needing to accumulate, not driven by anxiety. The disciples, he says, were known and named and unafraid people who turned the world upside down, or maybe we can say turned it right side up. The truth is that frightened people, he says, will never turn the world because they use too much energy on protection of self. It's our calling to be unafraid. Don't hold on to me, Aunt Beth. Maybe I will never read John's Easter account again without hearing Siggy's voice ringing in my ears. Don't hold on to me, Aunt Beth. And oh, I want to hold on. I want, I want my girl to be safe. And sometimes her antics leave me full of fear. But more more than I want to hold on. I want her to experience life to the full, and I want her to be brave, and I want her to take big risks, and I want her to find great joy. And that is what God wants for us, too. Don't hold on to me, Jesus says. Resurrection is risky. It's risky stuff, and it is active. And new life means being on the move. Jesus has things to do. And as resurrection people, staying with Jesus means letting him go so that he can go ahead of us and we can follow. Don't hold on. But don't be afraid. Instead, let us come and see, and then go and tell, and go and tell, and go and tell. Amen. If you are here at the worship service, there is a basket in the narthex to place your offerings and tithes. For folks at home, they can be mailed to the church at 823 Franklin Park Drive.
you would rise and join in our dexology. <laughs> Generous and surprising God, when we thought that death had claimed your only son, you amazed us with the resurrection. Surprise us again with your ability to turn these humble offerings into gifts that will transform the world through our witness to your love. We lay our very lives at your feet, O oh God knowing that you will use us to proclaim and embody the gospel. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as we prepare our hearts for a time of prayer, are there joys or concerns uh, that you would like to lift up this morning? Joys or concerns? Diane. Sweet. So, wait, Paul will come with the, with the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, so Gabby. for my family, uh, we have a concern. Keep my mother in your prayers. As um, we learned recently, she only has two years left. Thank you. We will pray for her and, and for your family. Um, prayers for my brother-in-law, Mike. He was rushed to the hospital on Friday. They, be, there was, they don't really know, but they think he has sepsis or uh, maybe a stroke of some kind, but they're not entirely sure yet. And with the holiday weekend, it takes, you know, it's too long. So we'll keep, keep him in your prayers, please. We will. Others? Friday, we're going to be burying my Aunt Barbara Knowles. Um, we got family coming in from all across the country. So if you could just pray for safe travels and comfort for the family. Absolutely, we will. I have a joy. Uh, Doug and Joanne and Eddie send their Easter blessings to the whole congregation. Great. Thanks, Ann. Others. I would uh, uh, also share with you, uh, Joan shared with us a, a couple at the beginning that we're praying for uh, the family of Linda Horton, uh, who's passing we're mourning, and uh, she mentioned my, my cousin Karen uh, passed away uh, this week. Uh, my, my mother is also recovering from a, a hip replacement uh, that she had at the beginning of the week, uh, this past week. She's been behaving pretty well as a patient, which is, you know, <laughs> unusual for her. So, but, you know, pray, pray for her continued recovery. And, and she would have loved to, to be here today if she wasn't. Uh, although I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her Carl came in and did just fine. So I don't know why she's being kind of a slacker. So, uh, but pray for her. Any, any others? Let's be together in a time of prayer. Holy God, we gather on this most holy of days. It is Easter. It is a day of new life, of resurrection. And sometimes, God, it is hard for us to 
let it all sink in to experience this new life and this new resurrection that we proclaim because we are, we are holding on. We are full of fears. And yet, you come to us. The risen Christ comes to us, helps us to loosen our grip, helps us to calm our fears so that we can do the work that you have called us to do. We're invited to come and see, but then we are sent to go and tell. This Easter, help us think of the ways that we can go and tell all of the ways that you have touched our lives all of the ways that you have poured out your blessings on us, all of the ways that we see hope and life in the midst of struggle. Oh God, as we gather today, we come bearing some, some hardships and some, uh, some concerns, some struggles that we carry with us. We lift up to you, especially those who are in need of your healing. We pray for my mother, Karen, as she recovers from her hip replacement. We lift up Mike as he is waiting for a diagnosis of sepsis or stroke or something else and the, the uncertainty of the not knowing of the waiting. We pray for... Gabby's mom and what it means to deal with news of our finiteness of an end of life that is so much nearer God than we want. We pray to God for all who are grieving. We lift up to you my cousin Karen Ruth and my family, her family, as we mourn this unexpected loss, and especially for her son, John. We lift up to you the family of Linda Horton, and we give you thanks for her life and especially her faithful service to this congregation. We lift up the family of Barbara Knowles, as they prepare for her burial this week, and especially ask, oh God, that you would be with all of those who are traveling to be together and to share in this grief together. We give you thanks, God, for the countless joys and blessings that you bring to us. For those who are able to be with us in worship today, and especially for, for Carl, for Joan, for greetings from our friends from afar, from Doug and Joanne and the blessings that they send. We give you thanks for our time of worship, for the joy of being together, for the gift of music and for Christy and the choir and their leadership and the heart that they bring. Maybe a small choir, oh God, but they make a big and joyful noise, and we are grateful uh, for their sharing with us. We are grateful for community and being together, that we might together struggle and learn and study so that we can find the courage to go and tell. Oh God, we share these prayers with you and the unspoken prayers of our hearts, because we know, God, that you, you hear and you listen, and you always respond to us with love. Together, we share in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn is number 318, Christ is Alive. message of Jesus hasn't changed, we're still called to stay close to him. We just do it in a different way because Jesus is going into the world. And so don't hold on, but don't be afraid because Jesus goes before us and we are called to follow, to go and tell. Go forth in peace the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen.